Hi, I'm Joe from The Wrong Channel, and recently I've been working on building up my retro game collection. Now, collecting games is only part of it. If you want to keep the older systems and games working properly, you also need to keep them clean. The best way to keep your consoles clean is to keep your cartridges clean. Because dirty cartridges can lead to whole sorts of problems, like the infamous blinking light of death, or in-game graphical glitches. So today, I'm going to show you how I clean my cartridges. It's a very effective method that will leave your pins looking nice, shiny, and new as if they just came out of the box. And we all want nice, clean games, don't we? No. What do you mean, no? Why the hell? Here's a short list of what we're going to need in order to clean the cartridges the way that I clean them. For starters, you're going to need a 3.8 millimeter security screwdriver. This is what we're going to use to actually open the cartridges in order to get to the pins. Now, it's true that you could get a 3.8 millimeter security bit instead of the actual screwdriver, but I, I find that it's easier to lose the bits, so I prefer to actually use a screwdriver. It's just easier to keep around. I'll also provide a link down in the description for a nice 3.8 millimeter security screwdriver and a 4.5 millimeter security screwdriver. Of course, today we're going to be focusing on the NES cartridges, so that's why we're going to need the 3.8 millimeter security screwdriver. Now, the next and most important part is the brass polish. This is what's going to break down the grime that's on the uh, pins inside the cartridge. It's going to be doing most of the heavy work. Uh, personally, I use Wyman's brass polish. It's pretty effective. It hasn't let me down yet, so uh, give it a shot. Next, we're going to need some rubbing alcohol. Now, I prefer to use 91%, because really, the higher percentage you can get, the better. You don't want anything below 50%, because then it's a lot of water, and you want to try to keep moisture away from your cartridges at all costs. So, that's why it's best to go for a higher percentage. You can get 50% and above, and that's what you want to aim for. Like I said, 91% works pretty good, because the higher the alcohol percentage, the faster it will evaporate when you're cleaning with it. Next, Q-tips. Lots and lots of Q-tips. You're going to want to buy these babies in bulk, because you're going to be going through a lot of them. I typically go between 6 and 10 Q-tips per cartridge that I clean, just depending on how dirty it is. And the reason why you're going to go through so many is because it's really the one thing that's used in just about every step of the cleaning process. Finally, you're going to want a paper towel. Really, you can substitute any kind of cloth for this, but you have to keep in mind that the goal of this whole endeavor is to clean the pins, so you want to make sure that it's kept clean. So don't be just using any old kind of cloth, you know. You don't want to have it sitting on some kind of oily rag or anything like that. So as long as it's a clean cloth, it'll do. The first thing we're going to do is open the cartridge shell to get to the pins. So grab your 3.8mm security screwdriver and unscrew the screws on the back of the cartridge. Some cartridges have screws that can be removed with a flathead screwdriver, but most will require the security screwdriver. You'll also notice that most cartridges have three screws in the back, but some do have five. As you remove the screws, be very careful not to lose them. You won't be able to run to a local hardware store to replace them, so try to keep them together. Now that the cartridge shell is open and we have access to the pins, take a few seconds to look at them. They may not look too dirty, but you'll be surprised to see just how much grime they actually have on them. During the cleaning process, try not to touch the pins with your fingers, as the oil from your skin will just make them dirty again sooner. Instead, hold the circuit board by the edges. Grab a Q-tip and dip it in the brass polish. Then smear it evenly along the pins. Once all of the pins are coated, begin to scrub them with the Q-tip. You'll notice immediately that the grime is coming up as the Q-tip head starts to turn black. Flip the Q-tip over and keep scrubbing with the other head until the brass polish is all gone, or mostly gone. After that, it's time to break out the rubbing alcohol. Take a new Q-tip and dip it into the rubbing alcohol. Then rub it on the freshly scrubbed pins. This will clean up the remaining brass polish and grime. 
Keep scrubbing with the rubbing alcohol until the Q-tips stop picking up dirt. After that, take one last dry Q-tip and rub it across the pins to help dry up any remaining rubbing alcohol. Now the pins look nice, shiny, and new. Repeat the process for the pins on the other side as well, then you'll be ready to put the cartridge back together. But before you do, you might also want to clean the cartridge shell where the pins are housed, as this area could also be dirty. Don't worry about putting the circuit board in backwards, since the cartridge shell and board are designed to only fit together one way. When putting the screws back in, don't tighten them too much. You'll want to stop turning them as soon as you meet resistance. And there you have it, a nice clean cartridge. As a side note, if you have any cartridges with permanent marker on them, the rubbing alcohol can clean them off as well. However, you'll want to be careful to avoid any contact with the label, as the rubbing alcohol could damage it. Well, that's all it is to it. It's a pretty quick and clean and easy process. It's pretty cheap too. And I strongly recommend doing it because keeping your consoles and your cartridges clean is also going to increase the lifespan of them. Now that's exactly what we all need. We need to keep these things around because not only are they relics of the past, but they are still fun to play. So let's keep that in mind, should we? Shall we? Will we? Jeez, yes. Hope this guide was a help for you guys and Hopefully you enjoyed it along the way too. I'm Joe from the Wrong Channel. Have a great day and happy collecting.